Another one of my favorite drills for decontamination is, I came up with this one out of frustration. I had, I had a, a private school guy about 10 years ago, all day, just him and me, who really was uh, suffering, and he knew it, from, from being a control freak in golf. He was a control freak in the rest of his life, too, so it was no, you know, you know not a surprise he was ad adopting the same sort of neurotic strategy toward golf, but, but he was paying me to help him break through that, and so, that, so I said, you know what? I said, we were having moderate success, but not that dramatic breakthrough I was expecting, because you know, 99% of my students get. So, because he was he was obsessed with being perfect. I even had him read Rotella's famous book, his first book, Golf is Not a Game of Perfect, where Bob brilliantly analyzes the neurosis behind behind a perfectionist mentality for golf, because for a lot of reasons, but the big reason is. The nature of the golf swing itself and the nature of the game, the vast amount of land that we play on, you know, 600 yard or more par fives, 220 yards par threes over water, the, the whole, you know, you know, out of bounds, bunkers, tall grass, you know, uh, trees, sand, everything's in the way, you know, all this trouble, all these hazards. It's not a game that mixes well with over controlling type A perfectionist personalities, but because of the economics behind golf and the way it evolved, particularly in America, um, and some of the political parts of golf, it, it became a sport for people in general, not everybody, but in general, there, there at least a strong uh, subsection of the golfing demographic with wealthy people, particularly wealthy businessmen, which by definition almost are type A control freaks, right? That's, that's the way it is. So. Um, and they wonder why, and I have these guys come to me all the time, pay me a lot of money to work with them on their games, and, you know, and, I, and they say to me, I don't understand, Jim. He goes, the guy, I, the, the, three months ago a guy told me this. He said, I'm the CEO of one of the top corporations in the world, and everything I've done in my life I've been a success at. I was a straight-A student in grammar school, high school, college, graduate school, 4.0 average, uh, you know, Phi Beta Kappa, Started my first business at age 22, and it was a million-dollar company a you know, year, year or two later. On and on, you know, uh, you know, most valuable player in my men's, uh, you know, once a week men's basketball league. Uh, you know, club champion in tennis. The list goes on. You know, performance in sports, in school, and in business at the top echelon. And the guy says to me, "But I suck at golf, and it's driving me effing crazy. Why can I not play golf well?" With everything else I do in my life, I can do really well. And I said to him, well, there's more than one answer, but the big answer is you're a control freak. And control freaks, over-controlling personalities in golf, it's like oil and water. And he had read over 100 books on the golf swing. He knew all this theory. He spent all his time recently in the last decade or so on the internet, on the golf forums and on YouTube. He knew more about golf swing theory than 25 years ago the average golf teaching pro knew way more. The problem was he was he wasn't doing any of it, right? Because he was still having these problems, and he had a big he had a flinch. He had a case of the full swing yips and, and some other issues. So I said to him, you know what? I go, you got to get out of your head that you had to be perfect to hit a golf ball. He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, I go most of the time, not every time, but I can hit the ball reasonably well with a really bizarre grip. So I showed him. I, I took a super weak grip like this, where my hands were rotated way over, right? Now that shouldn't ordinarily produce a very weak shot that goes to the right. And I go, now, I, I trust my athletic ability in spite of, and I just hit, a, what, a little, what, two-yard fade, Joe? But I hit this six iron into about a two-club wind, about 150 yards, with about a two-yard roughly cut on it. And I haven't done that in probably, I don't know, probably since that lesson with the guy. I would never normally grip it so weird. I'm talking, I gripped it like this, like, right? Still a square face, but but I but I knew how to I knew how to over you know how to roll because my field sense for my swing is I knew how to roll excessively to try to square the face a little extra, so I hit a good shot, and I did a couple I did I did a, I did a swing where I went like this I go, you have to realize this guy's name was Tom I go Tom you have to realize, you should be able if your awareness for your body is good. That was actually better than the first one that was dead straight. Right about 165 with about a two-yard draw. I mean, look, I went like this, so I hit a, almost a perfect golf shot. So, I mean, I call it the weird setup or the weird grip uh, drill. So, so if, you're, if you have trust in your swing and you're letting go of control, 
it's a great training exercise for how to trust your swing and realize, and again, I, I might have topped it or chunked it, but the point is if you did say, I kind of got a little lucky there in both of those, but the point I'm trying to make is if I had done 10 shots like that, only one would have been probably terrible. And you know, one, one or two might have been really good like that. And the rest would be what, like, somewhere between what I call a mediocre and a good miss. But and, and if, if you're hitting mostly mediocre to good misses, you're still shooting in the high 70s, low 80s at the worst. This, is, this guy was you know mid 90s shooter, right? And he was convinced, he had convinced himself he had to be perfect about everything to hit a shot well. So that's, that's why I did that drill and I had him do the drill. So that's what I want you to do. So, so if you have a normal grip, go real weak or go really strong. Or, you know, uh, this is what we call the backwards drill, do that one. Um, you can swing one hand. I, well, I do that all the time, but but for, for him it was new. I had him swing one handed like this. A little thin, but straight, about 140. Um, the point is, if you if you if you vary how you train and do extreme, I mean really extreme, mechanics. That was really good. Um, it helps your confidence for one it also helps you get over this incorrect belief system that you have to be perfect in your mechanics to hit decent golf shots you don't have to be perfect in fact the belief that you have to be perfect makes you flinch which ruins the shot so right you what you want is what i call rpm you want reasonably proficient mechanics rpm with 100 percent commitment to your shot elements target, trajectory, distance to the target, the short game spin, uh, curvature if any. You want commitment to your target, to your, uh, to, uh, shot, your shot elements, and you want trust in your swing, trust your subconscious to control your body, and you want confidence in your ability to pull the shot off. And you start doing these weird like trick shots, you know, you know shots on one leg. I uh, haven't done that one in a while, but Let's see if I can do it. I'm, I'm having some hip issues. So I got I got some hip arthritis going on in my right hip. So if I do my left leg, it shouldn't matter, right? Well, that ball had a crack in it, and considering it was still pretty good. <laughs> the point is, again, you don't have to be perfect. So you know, try try that the weird the weird uh, golf shot drill. It's 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 a pretty good one.